Let's go. Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Dow call. Uh, today we have a few things to discuss. Um, I put two things on the agenda for this week's call. Uh, one thing is a developer update about the UI. Um, I know Jesse will weigh in on that. And then Defox, Dbox, yeah, DeFi Box mining pool promotion with DeFi Box. So uh, let's get started. Started. I know Jesse has some exciting developer updates. So take it away, Jesse. Yes, yeah, sure. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure if it's exciting updates, but I would like to just share the, the progress in general on the on the development side because it's been a while before we um, like this progress. This of this been in progress for a while, and and it's been uh, it's been a while since we released anything, um, but they're still brewing. So um, there's a few things happening right now that we're actively developing. It's been going a bit slow this month because we, we had uh, yeah some of the developers um, not active, like David is on a holiday, Lawrence is, uh, is, is out of the running for a few weeks. Um, so yeah, the team has been on the development side a bit lighter, but we have been progressing uh, quite a bit. Um, one of the things I'm pretty excited about because it's almost ready is the DAO uh, dashboard update. Uh, it's going to look a lot fresher and and like more logical, I think. Um, so, yeah, that 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 part will we already discussed before uh, what it entails in general. But uh, we've added some things like the profile pictures from um, like uh, atomic assets, basically NFTs on EOS. That can be used as the DAO profile pictures. Um, we, we've like uh, made it so that there, you can whitelist a couple of collections, so the DAO could actually, uh, through a proposal vote on which collections to add or remove from the allowed collections that you can choose from uh, to set as your profile picture. So for the default, we will just pick a pick. I don't know, just kind of a nice selection of of the collections that that are supported, and those will be the ones that you can select uh, in edit profile uh, for the picture to set. And the dashboard will have things like um, an ATP selection interface. So when you create a proposal, you can select what kind of ATP you want to use. Um, so so that, that will make it a, a lot easier for anyone to create um, different types of, uh, of ATP proposals. Right now, you have to like manually craft the ATP uh, through the command line or, or through blocks, uh, which is a little bit tricky, and then add it to the proposal. But in the new interface, it will be kind of uh, more smooth. Um, so that update is coming. Um, I don't have a, have a definite date yet, but like um, we will have some support, some more developers uh, working actively uh, from Monday. Um, so this week it's, uh, it's, it's mainly uh, me doing some of the updates, but I think like end of next week uh, is when we will have like a kind of big update available uh, for preview for comments before we actually finalize everything. And we're also developing stuff still on the platform side. Obviously, um, we've engineered like it's not a new, it's not going to be a new uh, version of of the of Effect Network of the of the whole application. But the architecture is going to, to change in a in a few ways because right now we're we're encountering these bottlenecks where basically the front end of of app .effect Network is always fetching all the submissions to figure out what campaigns can be joined by a worker. And it's it's causing us a lot of trouble because the nodes are often um, quiet, uh, like the RPC nodes we use are quite like restricted in, in how quickly they sync or how many requests you can do. Um, and it's causing some issues that it takes a long time to load. Uh, joining a campaign can be pretty time consuming. So with this new architecture, we, we made it so that the smart contract will basically hand you a task when you call the reserve task action, it's kind of a technical uh, deep dive, maybe. Uh, but like compared to before, you, like the the worker, the front end had to figure out what task can I reserve, and that's that's why it needed to fetch all tasks. And we've in the new architecture, we've reverted that to basically say um, the front end just tells the smart contract, "Give me a task," and the smart contract will figure out what task to give. So it means that you'll never have race conditions. It will be really quick. You know, to fetch all this all the submissions. It's like 
after some discussions with Lawrence, we just suddenly saw the saw the light uh, and the solution popped up and we're going to architecture that way, which means it will be way more performant uh, to do tasks. But this update is also coming along pretty quick. So we're, we're looking to release that. Um, yeah, to release that also in the next few weeks. Um, but those are the two major things that we're sort of still wrapping up that are taking way longer than, than we wanted them to take. Um, but those should be out pretty soon. And then, um, yeah, they're open for feedback. But um, of course, we're also really excited to work on the next things coming up. Um, but this was mainly the update for the current state of, of dev update, what we've been working on and what's, uh, what's coming up like end of next week. Super. That's a great, great update. Thank you. I wrote notes and I'm going to write that up in a post here in the server as soon as the call's over. And we will also like start because these, these things have been brewing for way too long. And, and um, yeah, I'm like, I'm, I'm really eager to get them out, but we will start doing like weekly updates on the dev side again, because we're, we're, we have quite a like good roadmap now and and uh, we will have uh, some devs working dedicated uh so we want to do like these the weekly updates um on the dev side as well to give everyone like in the loop on uh, on what's coming up and what's one of the next things you'll be working on yeah good question there's a bunch of things um like this is not set in stone but it's always good to talk about um so one thing is uh, a hackathon that that we're structuring um so yeah that that's going to be a an important one and um incorporating um we have like a few big items on the on the roadmap for what's next up um but uh there is uh, working on the mobile interface and making the worker side way more accessible. Um, that's one that's sort of been in R and D phase, but we're considering um, picking that up. And there is also uh, some ideas right now on making the AI marketplace um, element more, uh, yeah, to to do R and D more on that and and come up with some kind of uh, system for how how that would fit into the um, Current place, so so where, like what 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 we've uh, been thinking about now, and what the arc what the platform supports would be like to add um, AI sort of workers in the system that can make it really convenient for um, if you're making, um, for example, a campaign that does image classification or um, like. Um, uh, like maybe translation services, you can have workers do the translation service, but you can also have uh, algorithms do the translation service. And the nice thing is that because we have a human in the loop, we can have like the algorithms more tightly uh, integrated with uh, with the platform. So so it should be like having the human in the loop uh, really close to the AI, because right now it's kind of uh, complicated to get data from an AI into the platform. You need to like set up a manual bridge. Like uh, I think DJ Strykanova, you're uh, working on, a, on an NFT labeler that's also using AIs to label the images. Um, so we're, we're work, yeah, that's, that's, that's one element that we would love to work out further uh, once, the, once the platform is uh, more solid uh, running. And of course, getting tasks online. So, so, um, we have a few, that's also what the hackathon will be for. Um, and the hackathon will have like a theme as well that we're still uh, working out all together. We also want to, of course, uh, discuss it with the DAO um, soon. And yeah, having more tasks online is, is, is also a major importance, but we think the yeah AI integration element, for example, the hugging face integration, or there's a few proposals that came by, um, to make sure we have all features needed and, and all documentation needed to facilitate and tight integration. That will also be, that's also part of the like next up roadmap. So it's quite a bit, um, but just to give you guys, to give uh, you some, uh, some, some thoughts on, on it. Good. Thanks. I know the, the, the qualification system could use uh, more love, uh, setting it up, making it easier to do. 
Yeah, that's a really good topic as well. So what we thought about was to replace the qualification system completely with NFTs, with atomic assets, which means that we can basically remove that part from Effect Network and, and use NFTs as a qualification. Um, there's already some like libraries, SDKs, interfaces to quickly create a collection or, or like to, to create a uh, to create and an hand out NFT. So and, and it would make the codes in our in our end simpler, right? Because right now qualifications are kind of um, they're incomplete. They're not working really smooth, but there's also quite a lot of code in that's that's in our code base. Um, that's sort of not yeah it it's it's not ideal right so we're thinking to replace it with atomic assets and create a, like a really nice interface around setting up a, uh, like these nfts and the cool fact will be um, of course they can be soul bound atomic assets right so that that's uh, it, they're they're by default non tradable but by swapping it with atomic assets we might be able to create a way more sort of accessible convenient interface for it uh, with the upside, you can also like see them, and, and they'll feel a bit more like uh, like like rewards as well. Yeah, I remember talking with David how, like in the NFT itself, you can have parameters, and so if you just set the parameter of who created or who the NFT is assigned to, then it like you could just check if it's valid for for the user, so people can't just you know send it somewhere else and it becomes invalid. Though I guess the only thing is it would only work on EOS. It, you, it wouldn't be transferable, would it, to Binance Smart Chain? Or do you think it could work also? You couldn't transfer them to Binance Smart Chain, but we, at the moment, we sort of mirror. So we have our own account system in, in like, we're keeping all the accounts mirrored on EOS. So every Binance address that's on the force also has a, an entry in the EOS table. So we could actually have give them, um, the NFTs as well, so it would be compatible. We would make like an uh, an, an NF like an NFT um, for for fee accounts uh, element, which is which is the the fee accounts can already handle that. So that shouldn't be too too tricky to have it work on both uh, systems. But we cannot use NFTs on the Binance Smart Chain side. That's that's a, a pity. But I think still we'll will like compared to the current system, we would basically get get a way better system uh, with less uh, effort than, than making a new system ourselves. Yeah, the other appeal of that is, um, I know there are DAOs on EOS, like you have the, for example, the, oh shoot, I just forgot their name. Uh, the, you know, they, they have the meetings with the videos, um, It's a DAO on EOS. I'm thinking um, there. You don't mean EOS DAC, right? That's that's been quite a while back. I think that they were active. Oh, EOS Eden. Yeah, the Eden. Ah, Eden. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. So they 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 uh the members they prove uh that there are people and they get like a profile picture as an NFT that represents them as like a member that votes. And so, like, yeah, like, I think NFTs could definitely improve qualifications a lot because it could also allow other groups, for example, like, let's say Eden Dow wanted to sponsor, like, some tasks to do something, but they want to, like, kind of be, a, let's say, protectionistic about it in a way and only allow for their Dow members to do it, right? That would allow them to, like, designate you have to have one of our NFTs to do these types of uh, tasks. And that would be totally possible if we can get, like, NFT integration. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that would be that would that would be yeah compatible straight away then with with doing tasks on the on the on the platform. Oh. To um, for BSC, um, what about uh, partnering with Air NFTs, which are on BSC, or or some other NFT platform that's that's on there. We could like check it though for the BSC side, like like DJ mentioned, like the B the, the BSC NFTs will not be compatible with with uh, 
with Effect Force platform. So you cannot mm -hmm. set them as profile pictures or either like we, we won't be compatible with them. Um, what we might be able to do, and, and that's something still uh, very much like uh, unclear what exactly needs to happen, but to, to integrate with um, EOS EVM, I'm actually wondering a little bit what the traction is on the EOS EVM side, because they did have a really a large funding um, funding available there. And I haven't, yeah, I haven't really followed closely, but I, I'm wondering what the traction is. Do you guys know if there's any, if that's um, going well, the, the EOS EVM side? Uh, well, I don't know about metrics, but they did get big, uh, uh, what's it called, multi-chain or basically a big uh, bridge service that like has hundreds of tokens bridged. Uh, they're going to include e EOS EVM. And I know Binance, uh, like they've been working on making sure it will be compatible with the big ma biggest exchanges. But in regards to actual like uh, uh, dApps, uh, I've seen like there were the, the in-house dApps that they had the, the door hacks hackathon for they're, they're being built. Um, uh, their focus has been a lot on the GameFi, so I'm not sure. Like they haven't, they're kind of been mum about it. But uh, I know I, I, t I asked this question to uh, Yves, and he said uh, there's no real application for the funding. You just need to contact them directly. So I think uh, you said you'd do that a while ago, and uh, see if maybe there's some collaboration that uh, Effect Network or Effect DAO can do on the OS EVM. I, I'm I personally suggested uh, finding uh, see if we can get funds for price pools on the Dora Hacks Hackathon, which uh, that's also I guess we can discuss uh, this DAO call um, if we want. I guess uh, now it's not that tricky getting the DAO funds because we can use the ATP. Um, to send it. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, yeah, that would that would be uh, good. I'm, I'm, I did reach out to them before. Like, we should definitely try if they want to. Like, yeah, if if they want to invest a bit in getting effect uh, on the EVM side or like integrate with the EVM side, I think that could be interesting for us, as there might be a user base there. Uh, as well, so yeah, definitely worth exploring. I'm I'm gonna double follow up on 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 that side because I didn't get a reply from uh, from them yet. Uh, how so? How's the? What are you thinking for the hackathon? Um, I I know I think you've set up the organization now, right? Yeah, Gabi, uh, Gabi set up the organization for us and did like uh, filled out most of the fields. Um, it's already like, I'm not sure, I think it's already popping up in the hackathon list. Oh, it only like we put the start date really late, um, but the platform looks good. Like, I think it looks great, uh, the features and the, and the interface. I don't know if you, Gabi, yeah, we if you, if you, if you thought of it. Yeah. Um... Yeah, it looks really good. Um, we did a test one. Um, everything looks fine. Uh, we just need to figure out the details, um, like the description, what's going to be the title, um, price pool, and all of these things. We're going to see if we can partner up with um, with some other AI project in the space also. Oh, that's so we're idea. just figuring out, yeah. We we're just figuring out details, um, but yeah, the interface looks really good, and their customer service too. So definitely, definitely using um, Dora Hacks. So then you're thinking, we're thinking then of an AI theme this time around, right? Yes, hundred percent. Because I feel like. Uh... Uh, you mentioned, uh, yeah, I, I have a post on uh, my uh, a forum post about my uh, NFT project. So I made a lot of progress and I figured out, and yeah, like Hugging Face is really, yeah, really great and how easy they make it for you to use AI models. Like you really just call one line and import it, and then there you go, you can do image recognition. It kind of blows my mind. Uh, so uh, I was able to collect all the NFTs uh, on EOS like the assets and then download the, the 
from IPFS the, all the images. And I, I was able also to, uh, because there's, there's, there's only 20,000 about unique IPFS hashes for the 2 million NFTs, which is interesting. And anyway, so I was able to process them. Uh, with my 3090, it took, I could process about 5,000 images in a day, which um, I don't know, may, may, I guess awesome. it feels like it's going to be harder to scale for WAX, but uh, I have enough to fully process EOS at least. Uh, but then, uh, so the question, the, the, the idea I had is that the next step could be for effect workers to, to rate these captions then, because the, the, the model I use, it generates a lot of, uh, phrases and it goes from, I think from the most, uh, confident to least confident, but for searching, I wonder like, what is the optimal amount? Like, for example, is one phrase best or maybe two phrases is better, um, so yeah, like I think uh, for for my specific project in the future, like I, if I would like to do effect network integration, I think I'm going to focus on uh, having it so that workers can rate the captions for a specific yeah. model and also between models, because I think because it's so easy to just swap different models. If we can, if I can just get like four different captions generated from different models, we can figure out which captions users on in general rate as better for uh uh describing the content of an image so i think there's like a lot of stuff in regards to that that can be done and finally the 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 next the goal after that would be uh on ocean protocol i feel like there's a very good like marketing uh strategy here where we can publish uh effect networks source data sets on there and like like even though Ocean Protocol is very big, the actual data sets they have are still the same ones I've seen there last year. They're either like public uh, domain stuff that governments publish or they're mm -hmm. like finance data, like DeFi data, like which I guess is important, but it's like, it's definitely not like a complete marketplace yet, right? So I feel like if, if Effect Network could like advertise itself by showing off that they can create these... Uh, data sets where you have AI data rated by human workers, I think that could be a good way to uh, uh, have people put, get eyes on us. That's a really good idea. I actually have the contact for Ocean Protocol. So we can um, talk something up with them as well. Yeah, you could make it like, I think you, what you should advocate like is making data sets that uh, are posted to Ocean Protocol, but are made by Effect Network. Yeah. Because that, that would be then very uh, synergistic. Yeah, I'm just writing this down. Nice. Very good ideas as always. You got your hackathon entry um, ready, pretty much. Oh, I can't participate myself. That would be... Yeah. I'm like and... one of the biggest DAO members. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I have a um, I have a draft good. description um, set in there. I need to upload now that Abby's or Gabby's made me an admin to the page. So we're gonna be adding that in, um, and then looking at all the other fields of uh, writings that need done. Um, so I think once we get a, a pretty good draft, I think we'll have some more DAO debate on or input on like what to officially title it. But it's it's in the early process and it's it's shaping up nicely so far. I really in, like how their platform is. It's really nice, better I think than the other place we used before. Suits us better anyway, I should say. The other platform is great, but this one's better for us. Yeah, and then. Also, um, uh, yeah, in your notes you're writing down now, I'm, I'll be on the Fireside chat. Stefan scheduled me for a slot to give Effect Network updates. So you can also add any stuff you want me to talk about. Super cool, super cool. Oh, and the next thing, event, I should say, is the uh, thing with DeFi box, the mining pool. 
So in our our chat, I got the uh, image and link from um, um, Raven, and I did a pull request to get our website updated um, with the uh, the DeFi box link and image. Uh, GitHub is taking a while. There's something going on. It's been sitting there for five hours now. So hopefully, maybe overnight, my time, it'll update. Um, and I think his team is going to work on setting up a Twitter spaces uh, for us. So um, get some updates more on that and uh, let everyone know what he says. But it's looking pretty cool, I think, so far. Yeah, yeah. The it should be pretty good for. Hopefully, it can encourage some DAO members and then other people who are just interested in EFX to uh, stake. Yeah, nice. That's a good promotion. So the yeah, hopefully we can also do an uh, an AMA or something with their community. But it looks like that's getting off the ground pretty soon. I think like. This already in, a, in the next week. I don't remember the date, but it was already in April. So yeah, and twenty uh, the twentieth is when it goes live, I think. So tomorrow. All right, tomorrow. Awesome. And it's also being recycled. So I don't know, like, um, uh, I guess in the sense that, uh, basically, uh, I wonder if. The promotion will box it's the token itself will be um three months but the question is would we want to also continue just efx rewards uh i'm thinking yes i mean it's good to split it up so then we have a presence both on binance smart chain and eos good pools Yeah, and I think I think the the farm you were talking about the farm, right? I think that one is is now funded till like October or something, so it should yeah, be lasting uh, for quite a bit longer. Yeah, the Binance Smart. Well, yeah, the BSC farm. And so, yeah, like basically, uh, would we want to continue DeFi box farms as well? I guess we'll see how how successful they are. I think at the very least. It, like the problem with the Binance Smart Chain farm is I don't know the best Binance Smart Chain community to really, you know, advocate it for, right? Uh, it exists on PancakeSwap, but uh, the community itself, of which it is vast, it's hard to really kind of get into it. Though, like, I do notice, like, occasionally people from Binance Smart Chain jump in the, the chat and stuff, right? Yeah, I agree. I think, yeah, I'm also not sure. Like, I don't think there's a big community of people in Binance Smart Chain that are, I think people do enjoy the liquidity on, on PancakeSwap. So probably traders, right? Which is a different type of community than people like using the platform or, or joining in, in Discord and stuff. So, but I think trading wise, Binance Smart Chain is really, yeah, it's popular, it's being used. So, yeah, I think we should just at least keep that one going. Uh, maybe, maybe I don't know if there's going to be another farm round because that we've been doing the farm for a long time. So maybe we can think of something else um, than yeah. that. But yeah, I wonder if maybe we should like uh, we can keep uh, like keep what the the team has on there. But then for DAO members, maybe it's better for them to transfer to EOS. I don't know. I guess it's something we have to figure out. Yeah, I think maybe it's good to um, to recommend people to to be more on the EOS side as like the primary way to to because uh, we're it's it, yeah I think the EOS side is more where we are so so maybe that should be the first recommendation like if you want to stake that's the place um, I I think that makes sense. And people yeah. that don't want to be on AOS, they can go to Binance Smart Chain because it's maybe MetaMask and everything. Maybe it's more accessible to them. 
I also have um I also made uh, another thread here. I pinged you. I don't know if you saw it a couple weeks ago. Uh they have uh Binance Smart Chain has a DAP Bay. So like its own uh I guess uh index of DAPs. And I, I think Effect Force wasn't on there, so if we can get on there too, that would be good. Yeah, I was just uh, for checking the link. Nice. All right, let's let's get registered. I'm um, I copied the link and we'll we'll register there. Yeah, they also have builder grants as well. So yeah, it's uh, I think uh. Yeah, we should still keep because uh, we already have the bridge and everything works. So we should explore uh, Binance Smart Chain, uh, see if we can get some traction there as well. Uh, yeah, the thing is, like, uh, the Binance Smart Chain does have like a big community. With EOS, like, there aren't that many, though. There's a, like a lot of. It's kind of interesting there. Like, there's a lot of upside to EOS with they're building out like the EVM, but uh, like the audience itself is not as big. But I think uh, on a side note, uh, the the hackathons, I think I'll be able to just talk to like individually. I send a message to everyone who like participates, like on Pomelo and stuff like that, uh, which could help us increase the the pool of uh, participants. Uh, once the, the hackathon comes around. That'd be good. I think since we've, you know, been around the Pomelo community and stuff, I think that's a good audience to try to get people to join our uh, hackathon from, you know, I mean, these are builders and crypto builders where it was really hard for us to get recognition and traction with, you know, the builders and the people who made things and tried to participate in hackathons on the other platform. So, um, yeah, the Pomelo page, it's it's going to be a great asset for recruiting people to, you know, try to build on our platform who are already around EOS, too. Yeah, and it'll work great even, like, even if we have, like, the Ocean Protocol, which is, like, I think Polygon-based, uh, Effect, Net, Effect Network still works on EOS, so, like, um, it it's uh, still, like, an EOS... It's like a, it's like EOS and Polygon, like um, uh, both really are used for something like that. I'm good. Um. I think that's everything that was on the agenda so far. Anybody else have anything to add? Okay. Um, what do you think? Is that, are we about done, you think? Is my mic working? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Uh, oh. I'm just thinking, making sure thinking. of anything I forgot. Uh, yeah, I think uh, I think it covers it. Uh, yeah, just make sure. Um, uh, if, if is there anything that any of you would like me to mention during the fireside chat? I know um, review the articles you wrote and post them. Oh, nice. Thanks. Yeah, those are good ones. Especially for the AI stuff. Um, no, I think what you have already planned and then a few things that we've discussed in here I think are good. Yeah, I think I'll just um, 
ask uh, say how mo- if anyone will just be I'll, I'll I'll just ask if anyone how interested they'd be in the hackathon and what they think of it uh, making data sets um, but yeah okay and so it will be like I'll message of the draft I have so far for the uh, hackathon description it might help when you talk about it coming up all right I'll just paste that over to you real quick. Hey, sorry, can you guys hear me now? Yeah, yep, now I can hear you. I think not working because I, uh, I don't know why I have this sometimes with Discord. Uh, but awesome that you're, that you're gonna be on the fireside chat, uh, DJ, and that you got a, a slot. I think, yeah, really cool if you can mention the hackathon, that would be great to already like get, get some. Well, Stefan, from there. And so, he read, uh, oh, sorry to interrupt you. No, go ahead. I was saying, uh, Stefan pinged me because he read your article, Rochelle. So those articles actually uh, are do have some traction. Oh, nice! He was like, hey, <laughs> I, I read this. Uh, do you want to talk about it? And I'll be... I couldn't talk about it last week because, like, these these construction workers were, like, jackhammering, like, outside my house at, like, 7 a.m. in the morning. So I was completely out of it. Uh, I, I also missed the bell <laughs> call we, apparently, we scheduled. I completely forgot about it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so... I'm much fresher today. Awesome. And maybe one one item I wanted to just mention, there is a new, there's one proposal I put up today about, it's the last farm friend. So actually, if we complete this one, then the farm, uh, the, the, the farm will be fully funded, uh, which is, uh, which is awesome. So we completed the full year <laughs> funding of the, of the farm after this one. Yeah, I don't see any reason it wouldn't pass. It's good to finally have it ready. Um, as for the ATP, um, so how? Yeah, I I think before we talked about re, re refactoring how the treasury distribute funds. Remember, like. Mhm. Yes. Yeah. That's that's still on the yeah coming up uh, that that discussion basically. So we do want to like actually I've. I've been, yeah, can quickly mention this as well um, at the end of the call. But like, the, um, I, I asked around in the EOS community about some way to distribute tokens, um, like in a vesting streaming way, where where basically every second some tokens get released. And I couldn't really find a solution, but I got some help from some people from the community that uh, pointed me to some programs. And I was looking into, and I think I can actually quite easily write my own sort of uh, smart contract for this, where instead of having these quarterly releases of tokens, we just we just let the treasury release like every second, so continuously release a few tokens to the to the DAO, and and we don't have to worry anymore with budgets. That's that's basically what I'm sort of working on now. So I'm making that that program as sort of a proof of concept where there will be a continuous stream of tokens from the treasury to the DAO, and we can basically change the rate maybe with a proposal or we just fix it uh, forever uh, on a similar rate that we currently have. But if it's every second, there is no more like these um, quarterly or weekly or bi-weekly uh, transactions that have to be authored, but we can just, it will just be continuous, which I think will make it way more nicer and, and we can visualize it nicer and it's easier to understand. And cycles would just be for uh, for voting only, but not, it has nothing to do anymore with with budgets or or with uh, with stuff like that. That's that's my latest thought on it. But I, I'm totally like still actively working on getting that proposal uh, out. Would it, would it require like claiming? Yeah, it would require claiming. So basically, anyone would be able to claim at any time, and then the amount of tokens would be released that are currently claimable. Um, which is like how I have it in my mind is to have it on a per second basis. So the emission would be X amount of tokens per, per second. 
And we could sort of secretly embed the claim in certain transactions. So we could, for example, when you do like a, a fee pool claim um, as, a, as a DAO member or when a new cycle starts or whatever, we can sort of embed the action in there in the user interface. So it would sort of be seamless for, uh, for the end user. And then we have to, uh, and then the other thing that we would combine with this is, I think uh, we, we would want to restructure how the, because uh, I think one of the first few proposals was like, of the unused budget, we can, like some per uh, thirty percent was it goes to the people. I think we can like on average, we, it's pretty much the same. Like on, I think we can just make it a flat amount, and then with that we could. Uh, I don't know if that can be programmed to like uh, at the end of every cycle, just take X amount and distribute it to the uh, uh, fee pool. Yeah, that would also be a solution because that's the problem, right? If we remove budgets, uh, because that that's basically the idea: we remove budgets from from cycles, and uh, then we don't have the leftover anymore. So we don't like that. That sort of yeah, that doesn't fit well with the system. But we can definitely either pick a fixed amount or, yeah, a fixed amount might be nice. Um, yeah, they can just be a fixed amount and then the DAO can set the amount of ATP, but otherwise uh, at the beginning, or I guess that's a good question. I guess at the beginning of every cycle, it transfers it into the fee pool. Maybe something like that. Yeah, that could work maybe. I'll think about it. That would, that would it, it definitely. We need. I would. I really want that to be automated, right? Like th that, it goes automatically at the end of the cycle, for example. And yeah, that would be great. Like that would work, I think. Also for this, I think I want to write out like a proposal, and I'll discuss with you guys in in Discord. Um, but then instead of like voting on every little part, just just put a proposal out that sort of encompasses all the changes, and like have have discussions on on the DAO calls about what would be a better alternative to some maybe approaches, but I'm, I'm writing on like sort of the, the banker, like the, the, the baseline proposal. And from that point we can discuss it, but this one is still open. How do we do the, the recycle, right? The, how do we, how do we get the fee pool uh, tokens there? But I think that's a great suggestion, DJ. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll take it into account. I'll, I'll work it out. Maybe I think that could work. Sounds good. Cool. I think that's it from uh, from from my side. Like no more uh, no more topics. If anyone has any uh, anything. Um, that he wants to bring up, I'm, I'm, I have a few more minutes here um, before I have to leave. I forgot I was muted. I think, I think we covered everything. Been a great call. Well, this isn't really effect related, but Jesse, have you tried out um, Auto GPT? I haven't tried it out, but I was reading their GitHub. It's on my list. Um, it looks really cool. Yeah, they they automate like they they use GPT to basically automate like interacting with the internet. Right, you can do Google searches and write stuff and do like actions online. I've, I've, I've it's been like high on my list. Does it work well? <laughs> I see all these cool things come by on Twitter about it. Uh, it. It's working in the same way my my project I've been working on. Like, it can work pretty well for general tasks, but like, if you want something like really niche, it's gonna struggle. Uh, which is why, because I I try to get it to find uh, the best uh, crypto projects to. Uh, uh, collaborate for, for Effect Network, and it, it, it struggled to find any. 
it did find Ocean Protocol, which I already knew. So, uh, yeah. So like, uh, it, unfortunately, or I guess fortunately to the like the the doomers who think uh, the the we're gonna turn into paper clips next year are kind of overestimating the capabilities of it. But uh, at the same time, it is I think novel because uh, yeah, you're basically just letting GPT four evaluate itself. Oh, actually, that's another thing. Um, that's the thing. Like, it would evaluate itself to see whether the task was completed, but sometimes it would just it would just lie, like, and say, "Okay, it's done." <laughs> it's like it's like no, and I'd say no, it's not. I mean, it's not done. So yeah, there's a lot of refinements, I'm sure, for this type of thing. Um, I think it'll definitely be useful for researching, like, because uh, I think it's basically a high higher level web scraping, in my opinion. Because not only are you downloading all this content, you're also having GPT-4 analyze it. So the model is yeah. like an eight-year-old child. What do you say, Rochelle? So the model is like an eight-year-old child right now. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's exactly. Yeah, like uh, I know Bree mentioned, uh, uh, and Mark, uh, the, a guy named Mark, had the idea of how somehow integrating e effect workers in it and um uh i'm not sure like programmatically yet, any idea of how to do it but i feel like in general with the state of the the state of ai the humans will be more like uh the managers kind of evaluating monitoring the ai to make sure it's actually doing what it's supposed to do making sure it doesn't like go off track so yeah, I feel like that's definitely going to be like a, a niche that we should fill through the the long term. Yeah, and I was thinking like uh, what I was looking at it and and just thinking it would be cool if we can add a plugin or something where it can tap into effect force maybe because then you would like because it makes mistakes right and there I think I want to sort of try it out and see what kind of mistakes are like common and what's but if we can sort of uh, have a proxy where you put a, like an auto GPT task on effect force and then auto GPT does it and it and the result comes back into effect force but then there's actual some workers that are either evaluating the steps it performed or evaluating like the end result before it comes back to you so there is some like human validation for the task you put out um, I was thinking like that would be cool. And I, and I know that auto GPT has these plugins where you, because for a Google search is like, it, 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 it knows how to do a Google search and feed it back, right? So we could have like a plugin where it does something on effect force and then feed it back. So there is like this human, like while it's doing the task, some feedback. So it doesn't like go off trail or like to avoid common pitfalls or maybe when at certain tasks that are kind of important like i can imagine if you do something like to post an uh, an order online or, or like even to, to do trading or to write an email like if there if there's stuff that that's kind of high risk uh, that you don't want it to like accidentally like you know miss miss wire misunderstand and do something stupid that that you can add uh, the worker in there i was thinking about it if that that would be a nice uh a nice plugin to have um and then if people can just install effect force and have the validation part for their auto gpt tasks that could be like a, a cool way to integrate as well the human in the loop yeah as you said the the main question is basically the unknowns like like what if you like give it a like a you know 10k effects and then like it generates like a template for a task that, that pays out 10,000 for something, you know, like it will definitely need to be something like tuned to be safe. It doesn't like try to waste your money. Uh, but yeah, like uh, maybe it's some, maybe it's something, a theme for a hackathon as well. Cause uh, the auto GPT stuff is really, really new. Yeah, that's even a step further where auto GPT could post tasks. I was more thinking about like, what if you have auto GPT send an email, right, to to a person, and and but you you're sort of like you do want to make sure that that email isn't like 
insulting or gibberish or something because you're like you, you maybe you don't fully trust auto gpt yet so then maybe you we, we create a new like instead of sending an email it would be like send an email through effect force so you would it would send an email but it would first get need approval from effect force before it would send actually the email so we sort of hard program the the requirement for human validation in some steps something like that i was like thinking about when i was checking out the gpt but i definitely have to first try it out and see how it works yeah yeah the you can there's a, a uh what i linked there's also just a browser like front end so you can download it and uh it, i guess it's it's less uh it's less feature and test compared if you like program everything but uh you in the browser you can set the tasks and uh it just goes until you stop tell you tell it to stop or it believes it's completed the task uh because it it, it uses your api key from uh open ai uh, the gpt4 one not the not the subscription but the yeah. api which is separate but it's pretty cheap. i'll check it out it's nice if it works in the browser like if you want to test it like it only costs like maybe twenty cents uh, for like a day's worth of testing, which is what I did. Nice, I'll check it out. But yeah, I guess the the last thing. This is something you were talking about earlier. Um, I like the direction you're heading with. Uh, so basically, because uh, with Effect Network, the, the workers, while assumed to be human, don't have to be, right? Because the tasks itself are all programmatic, right? So you can, and we actually have qualifications to prevent bots from completing tasks, right? So basically what we're, what you're thinking of is having APIs connected into Effect Network, essentially, right? Exactly. Yeah, I would. What what like we want to have in the end is 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 basically have uh, something like ChatGPT working on the on the platform. So there is could be campaigns that are basically operated by bots. Uh, that would be there would be like qualifications exactly to to figure that out. But and then it could be subsequent campaigns that are like human expert only, and that. That that that's the real value there. Where when it's when you can add those up because it would be quite a cheap. First of all, it would give a really cheap uh, initial uh, iteration of your task if ChatGPT would do it. Um, so it's cheaper for for people to post it. You would get quicker results. Um, it gives like this unified interface because we would like interface the campaign. We basically interface to ChatGPT. Um, this is just as an example. I don't know if we actually use ChatGPT, but it could be any model behind it. And you would just pay any effects, right? So it would give you this unified interface for, for paying and managing and, and for your data flow, basically, which would be cool. But also then the human in the loop could be in the task after. So so like we you could actually have a human still validate or or, or um, do a task after that. But I think that having AIs operate on, on effect network is it's where we wanted to go, of course, and now it feels like there's so many models out there that are so useful that we can actually put it in uh, in practice pretty pretty uh, quickly if if the smart contract is is actually really working well as it's supposed to, then we could hook that up. So yeah, exactly, and and also the other way around. So having AIs on the platform could also mean it could like for reinforcement learning and stuff. It would be nice if those integrations are really smooth. So if AIs are actually on the platform, they can work on the platform and they can post tasks on the platform, then the iteration for feedback and, and creating data sets or validations of uh, outputs um, would be sort of a natural way to, 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 uh, to integrate. Yeah, it would definitely, because uh, uh, like with my script, uh... I have a Python script that connects to the, the hugging face stuff. And yeah, like uh, the, the only uh, tricky part is uh, uh, because uh, the effect JS is in uh, uh, and like a node module. So I'm not sure the best way to connect. I'm sure there is a way uh, 
because uh, I basically the machine learning community they love Python. Like everything has to be Python. It's kind of like uh, the it's kind of funny because as a web developer, everything was like everything must be JavaScript. Front end, back end, everything must be JavaScript. And then suddenly, boom, the Python people came in. They're like, oh no. It's like when uh like I guess uh actual competition again between languages. Yeah, yeah, true. So this definitely means we need a Python module for, for effect force, which is also something um yeah, that that would that wouldn't be too 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 complicated. We have of course the SDKs in TypeScript, but yeah, we would need to to create a, a Python version of that to uh to integrate with 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 like hugging face and, and and machine learning communities, but I think that's that's like doable. It's basically rewrite rewriting the TypeScript one to to Python, and Python isn't the hardest language. It's like it's really really accessible for creating these types of of integrations. But it's a good one to put on the on the on the roadmap as well. Like the Python the Python uh, effect effect SDK or like maybe could give it a better name, but that would be a nice a nice release um, for yeah for for machine learning communities to 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 easy use the platform. I think we need a few things in place to make that really work out, but definitely the Python version is is quite a big step forward. Yeah, at the very least, it'll make it integration much easier because uh, that's because uh, I plan to do yeah like uh, the throughput is good because uh, at some point I do plan to make uh, tasks with uh, this data sets I'm building uh, to rate uh, the captions uh, so yeah for the, I, I already built out like uh, a tool to communicate with effect.js with the and generate campaigns but it's all in uh, Node.js so like for now I'm just going to use like a database as the intermediary so it just scans the database for something new and then it can check do the tasks but uh yes but a python is pr probably so will help everyone in the machine learning community who is not familiar that much with javascript and typescript i guess i mean even i'm like typescript is just more strict javascript right yeah exactly typescript is just just javascript more strict with like javascript is a lot of these uh it's, it's just it's just a strange language with <laughs> with how it processes things like equalities and stuff. TypeScript just makes more sense and you can have type safety and stuff. I think it's just a, it, yeah, a better layer on top of it. It is the hour mark and I unfortunately have to go. I can't stay on to chat anymore. Um, but good luck with well, the first and I'll try to listen well. to it. All right. Uh, so I think we covered everything. So see you all um, in the next DAO call. Bye bye. Yes, see you next DAO call. Bye. Nice one. Right. Cheers. Bye bye.